Genetics is a little bit different um, in bacteria for a few reasons. First, bacteria are haploid. So they have only one copy of each chromosome. Not only that, bacteria have just one chromosome unlike the, the multiple chromosomes that eukaryotes um, tend to have. The chromosome can be circular or linear, but um, for our purposes, we'll always draw them as circular chromosomes. The other difference um, uh, between bacteria and sexually reproducing organisms is that bacteria reproduce by binary fission. And what that means is, by and large, the transfer of genetic material happens in the vertical direction through the generations. However, there are examples of horizontal gene transfer that are known in, in bacteria and that have both major public um, health policy implications as well as implications for genetic engineering. The first mechanism of horizontal gene transfer in bacteria is called conjugation, bacterial conjugation. And, you know, other than the, the chromosome that uh, the bacterium will have, which we are showing in blue, bacteria also have extra chromosomal DNA. In other words, they have episomal circular DNA. Epi means outside of, and so episomal means outside of chromosomes. Episomal DNA in the form of uh, circular molecules called plasmids. And during bacterial conjugation, a donor bacteria can donate or, or uh, give this circular DNA molecule, this plasmid, to a recipient bacterium. Bacterial conjugation has major public health policy implications since um, the spread of antibiotic resistance, especially uh, bacterial strains that are resistant um, to multiple antibiotics such as MRSA or multiply resistant Staphyloco Staphylococcus aureus. This, this, uh, uh, this spread of antibiotic resistance uh, it mainly happens through bacterial conjugation and um, there are these plasmids called R plasmids that we will discuss later that um, are the main vector or mechanism for the spreading of um, antibiotic resistance. The second mechanism for horizontal gene transfer in bacteria is that plasmid DNA that is outside the bacterium, uh, the, the bacterial cell, can be taken up by the bacteria. And this mechanism uh, of horizontal gene transfer transformation underlies virtually all of genetic engineering and biotechnology since the ability of bacteria to take up DNA through transformation is exploited to amplify and manipulate uh, uh, um, DNA molecules uh, in, in genetic engineering or biotechnology. The third mechanism of horizontal gene transfer involves viruses of bacteria and viruses of bacteria are called bacteriophages. The way any virus replicates and including bacteriophages is that the virus inserts or integrates its genetic material 
into the genome of the host cell and then utilizes the DNA replication machinery of the host cell to make copies um, of itself. And once you, uh, the virus has made enough copies, it bursts out of the host cell or lyses the host cell to go on and infect other cells. Occasionally, the virus, the bacteriophage, when it is packaging itself, will not only package its own uh, genetic material, but will take some of the host's uh, uh, genetic material or DNA from the chromosome where it was inserted and carry that uh, genetic material from the first host to the second host and thereby transferring uh, uh, genes from one bacterium to another in a horizontal manner. And this, this mechanism of horizontal gene transfer is known as transduction. Before we um, continue further, it is worthwhile to discuss how we work with uh, bacteria in the lab and um, we start with how bacteria are grown in the lab. Now, there are two main ways of growing bacteria. Um, one is that you can grow them in solution. So you can uh, take bacteria and put them in, in, in a medium that contains nutrients for the bacterium. You can shake this uh, flask that contains the bacteria in the medium to ensure that there is proper um, oxygenation and the bacteria will grow. Uh, in solution. However, it is not convenient to work with bacteria in solution because it's a heterogeneous mixture um, and, and different cells can have different genetic makeups. Um, so, so growing them in solution is a great way to produce a large number of bacteria, but it's not the best way to do genetics with them. So in order to do genetics, you do something called plating. And in plating, you take a, a, a solution of bacteria and you dilute it down. So let's say you have only about 100 cells. And you apply, pour or spread the solution on an agar plate. It's um, a petri dish of plastic uh, plate in which um, you have agar that contains uh, a growth medium for, for the bacteria. So um, plating uh, uh, this dilute solution of bacteria means that individual bacterial cells will be isolated from each other. And then you let these bacteria grow for one to two days. E. coli, they divide very rapidly. Um, there is one cell division every 20 minutes. And that means in um, one to two days, this one cell, each isolated cell, is going to grow into a clump or disc of about 10 million cells. And that is what these discs look like. Now, each disc or, you know, this, these 10 million cells have all descended from a single cell and therefore they are copies or clones of each other. And these discs are called colonies. And these colonies, um, as I said previously, they are um, genetically, all the cells in a colony um, are genetically identical or isogenic. And that allows um, us to do uh, genetic experiments with them. Whereas if we had not isolated these clones, 
um, but we're working with a mixed population where each cell could potentially have a different genetic makeup, it would not be possible to, genetic, uh, to do genetic experiments uh, with these bacteria. So you can have different types of uh, mutant bacteria. Um, one type of mutant is called an oxytrophic mutant. A prototroph is a bacterium that can grow on minimal medium. And minimal medium is um, just water, some inorganic salts, and some carbon source, so some sugar. And wild type bacteria, such as this biotin plus strain, can grow on minimal media. However, if you are a mutant strain, such as this uh, strain that's defective for the synthesis of a biotin. So there is a gene that codes for an enzyme that's required for the synthesis of biotin and this gene has been mutated. And so we designate this as bio minus. This strain will not grow on minimal medium, but will require minimal medium plus some uh, supplement. And in this case, the supplement would be biotin in order to grow. And this type of mutant is called an oxytrophic uh, mutant. Another category of mutants are called carbon source mutants, which is um, th these mutants lack the ability to utilize a particular uh, carbon source, a particular sugar um, uh, for nutrition. So again, a wild type will grow in medium with lactose as the only sugar as the only car carbon source whereas the mutant lac minus will not grow and uh, in, in a medium with lactose and will require medium with some other sugar and it's going to die if you try to grow it in uh, a medium that has only lactose as a carbon source. A third category of mutants are called antibiotic resistance mutants. Now, wild type bacteria are sensitive to antibiotics. So, um, for example, if you are wild type, you are sensitive. to streptomycin, which is an antibiotic. And uh, these wild type bacteria will die when exposed to streptomycin. However, you can have mutant bacteria that will grow in a, a medium with streptomycin. And those are designated as streptomycin R. So let's do an example. We have this strain, which is arginine minus, biotin minus, gal minus, and uh, tet R, which is resistance for tetracycline, which is a, a, a type of antibiotic. And the question is, what supplements will this strain require for growth in minimal medium? And so we have minimal medium and um, we have to decide what should we supplement this with. Now, this strain is arginine minus. That means it lacks the ability to synthesize arginine and evidently we will have to supplement this medium with arginine. This strain is also biotin minus and that means uh, this is another oxytrophic mutant and it lacks 
the ability to, uh, to synthesize biotin and therefore we must supplement it with biotin. Now, this mutant is gal minus and that means it, um, it lacks the ability to metabolize galactose or utilize galactose as a, a carbon source and we don't need to supplement the minimal medium with galactose because uh, this bacterium can't use galactose anyway and minimal medium usually contains glucose and and therefore um, uh, th th this this strain will be able to grow just fine in minimal medium since uh, minimal medium is not based on galactose anyway and uh, finally this strain is is mutant so it is sensitive to tetracycline and obviously we would not have to we would not like to supplement um, uh, uh, the, the medium with an antibiotic anyway um, however if we were to add tetracycline here the bacteria would grow just fine because they are resistant to tetracycline however adding tetracycline is not necessary for their growth so the final answer is that for this particular strain to grow you have to supplement minimal medium with arginine and biotin